Adult Swim has cut ties with Rick and Morty co-creator Justin Roiland after he was charged with felony domestic assault in California, stemming from an alleged incident on May in May 2020. According to the complaint, Roiland, quote, did willfully and unlawfully inflict corporal injury resulting in traumatic condition upon a Jane Doe who, quote, was in a dating relationship uh, with him at the time. Roiland, who has until this point voiced uh, the titular characters in Rick and Morty, he voices both Rick and Morty, mm. will be replaced with, and the production of the show will continue according to Adult Swim. So they put out a statement uh, earlier this week or a few days ago saying that Justin Roiland is out, but mm -hmm. Rick and Morty will continue. Um, I am a huge fan of Rick and Morty, Same. like massive fan. Uh, so I, I was... I was devastated because Justin Roiland is a very talented voice actor for, again, both of the main characters. He, he also vo voices a variety of other minor characters on the show. I, I am generally against canceling people for things having to do with their personal life and other things. In this case, this is he's being charged with an actual. This isn't like just like a Me Too, like a bet. He's being charged with a. It's, it's a Me Too with a level of actual criminal behavior. He's still. Guilt, he's still innocent until proven guilty. So you, you might say, you know, why before there are there's a conviction or something, he could be innocent. Are they taking this action? I think that would be fair. But they might, you know, in the all likelihood that he pleads to something, they, they, have, they just have to replace him, so they might as well start trying to find someone else now. Uh, I, I, I think it's very unfortunate that everyone's kind of in that situation. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> It was I bad love, news. I, love, I was like, I no, love, when I read it. <laughs> yeah, I love Rick and Morty. It's difficult to see how they're going to go on. Um, it might not, frankly, last that long. I, I can appreciate why they would want to give it a Girl Scout try, because it's an incredibly successful show. And I think it's, it's an so important smart. show so from good. an artistic perspective. I just, it's an extremely culturally relevant show. And it's not just that he's the voice actor. He's the creator of the show, right? Co-creator. Co -co with uh, Dan Harmon. And I, I don't have any special knowledge here, but I know some people who know some things who suggest to me that, uh, so anyway, I was, I was like talking with people who are also fans of the show, and I'm like, I said what you just said. I'm like, there's no way it can survive without him. Like, yeah. they can pretend it will, but they can't. And I was very cynical and skeptical. But people I talked to who know more than I do said that actually Dan Harmon is really the intellectual heft behind the show. Mm -hmm. Justin Roiland is basically just a line reader. Mm -hmm. And that they'll, that if they can find a voice actor, that, I mean, that you can look for people doing, I was seeing a lot of people on social media doing their best Rick and Morty impressions. Mm -hmm. Some of them were pretty good. I will, I will be totally honest yeah, with you. Yeah, look, Hannah Barbera. A Barbera's friend of mine was saying, they're mm -hmm. gonna replace him, you won't even be able to tell the difference. It will sound, it will sound more, uh, less different than like the first episode of Rick and Morty compares with the most recent season with Justin Roiland, where the voice has changed even though it's the same person. It'll, it'll not be as noticeable as that. Which, yeah. I hope that's the case. I, I'm, I'm I'm less worried about the voice acting aspect of it than the creative aspect of it. But if he's a co-creator and apparently the less impactful creative mind there, that gives me some reassurance because after all, there are a number of cartoons that have been going on for decades, the whole Hanna-Barbera lineup, and they're not still using yeah. the same guy who voiced Bugs Bunny 60 years ago. I presume. They're not. <laughs> so, <laughs> They're not. Um, so that that's survivable. It does raise some interesting questions. I mean, I, I believe there was a similar incident um, on another one of my favorite uh, cartoon adult shows, uh, BoJack Horseman, where the person involved, it wasn't the, anywhere near this level of accusation. It wasn't criminal. It had to do with uh, inappropriate behavior toward a staffer. Um, after they declined his advances and whether or not he punished her professionally mm -hmm. as a consequence of her not being interested in him. And there was this whole really interesting, very public apology tour, uh, conversation between the two of them that was public. Um, all of this like public rumination um, and stages of apology that he went through that many people believe is like a, one of the best models of how to handle these kind of situations and actually be responsible, um, accountable, and show penance and do what too often doesn't happen in Me Too, which is get to a place where both the victim and society feel like someone has actually paid their dues and can come back mm -hmm. and not just be excommunicated from the world forever. Because um, people make mistakes. Uh, and if you're a leftist who has this kind of rehabilitative criminal justice framework, it does seem really odd that in the context of Me Too, 
were like, no, you could, you know, you're, you're dead to us forever from society. But if you murdered a bunch of people or were convicted some other serious crimes, we want you to come back into society. Oh, thank you so much for bringing that up. I've raised that point so many times. Like, wait, don't you think someone, right, uh, someone con who, who went to prison for serious crime, you don't think an employer should, should be asking them about their previous history, right? But you think, yeah. like, a comedian who went on a really bad date should never be allowed to produce comedy again? I don't understand that at all. Yeah. That was my, I had the same kind of criticism of the extremely carceral, anti-restorative justice approach of some of the kind of more zealous Me Too yeah. activists. And, and I think the reason- It was a weird moment. I think the reason that, that disconnect existed was because in a criminal justice context, you have the fact of the prison time standing in for some kind of, um, emotional accountability, public service, penance. There's no model outside of, you know, religion, you know, some religions or just going to jail for what it looks like to pay your dues or do your time. So when something is beneath something that doesn't ri rise to the level of a criminal penalty, people are left saying, well, it feels like you're getting off the hook unless I just punish you forever. It feels like you're, you're, you're getting off the hook if I'm ever nice to you again, if I ever forgive you. And so I really do think you know, forgiveness requires us as a society to think about what we actually want from people, assuming that we want ultimately to rehabilitate folks, that should be our goal. What do you need for that to happen? And it could be some pretty significant things and time passing could be a part of it. Mm -hmm. R restitution made to victims could be a part of it. Public service could be a part of it. I don't know what it look, what it, it could look like a lot of different kinds of things. But I, I, I think we, we are more punitive precisely because we're unwilling to talk about what it means to forgive. Yeah. Well, what I want from Rick and Morty is the show to go on forever. <laughs> As, and they, they joke about it because it's a very self-aware sh show. Uh, Rick will say like, 10 more seasons, Morty, you know, 100, 100, 10 seasons in a movie. Actually, that's a line from, uh, from Community. It's, so Dan Harmon, so one of the reasons you can tell that Dan Harmon is the major intellectual force behind this, he was also responsible for Community, which is a very good show. Similar kind of humor and self-awareness and like meta commentary. It, 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 it's it very, it's, Con great continuity from one to the other. So you, I can see from having watched Dan Harmon's other stuff, his heavy, the, the, this is community. mostly his, uh, yeah. his, his baby. The Abed character on Community is like every character on, uh, on, on Rick and Morty. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a Troy, Troy and Abed in the morning mug. Troy and Abed in, in the, the morning. morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should bring that in to replace my, my rising mug next that's, week. That's great, that's great. <laughs> uh, I even got, a, I even sold uh, my wife on Rick and Morty. She was very hesitant at first and she loves it. It's really Oh, good. the second you get to that early episode where there's like the robot dog. Yeah, that, that's like the that takes over the world. Like exactly. I was hooked yeah. forever, devoted fan for life. Uh, so we're, we, we particularly like the vat of acid episode. Oh, that's a class. We I was just rewatching that, in fact. That's so good. Uh, so good. You yeah. prestige yourself, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right. Hopefully they can salvage this. Um, yes. We're rising for you right after this.